In the Doppler effect lesson, we talked about wave fronts produced by wave source at rest, and wave source is moving with speeds slower than wave speed. Next, let's look at what happens when a wave source moves at a faster speed. Now the wave source is moving to the right at the speed equal to the wave speed. In this case, the wave source is moving to the right at 1.4 times the wave speed. When a wave source travels at the same speed as the wave, we get all the wave crests meeting at the wave source, producing very strong constructive interference at the source location. In the case of an aircraft, this is a sound wave, which is a pressure wave. So for an aircraft to break the sound barrier, not only the swept wings, powerful engines, and the area rule important, structural integrity also has to be able to support high pressure from the intense constructive interference. Once an airplane attains a speed above the speed of sound, the constructive interference region changes from one dot to a cone, the shock wave cone. Wave crests meet at this cone. If this is a speedboat on water, the constructive interference part would be shaped just like this. And what is this called? A wake. In these two pictures, we can see wakes produced by boats traveling at speeds faster than the speeds of water waves. For a supersonic aircraft, the shock wave would be three-dimensional and cone-shaped. And the faster the speed of the aircraft, the pointier the cone. So a shock wave cone like this would indicate a slower speed than that one. In fact, we can find how fast the supersonic aircraft travel from the angle of the cone. Let's see. This is the angle of the cone. Not the full angle, but the angle from the cone to the center of the cone. I can make a right triangle here. This is a 90 degree angle because the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent line. This point is the center of this circular wave front, which means that back when this wave was produced, the wave source was here. And now the wave source has traveled from here to there, and the wave has traveled from here to here, which means in the same amount of time, this is the distance traveled by the wave source. This is the distance traveled by the wave. So, so this distance here is the speed of the wave source times time. This distance here is the speed of the wave times time. So sine theta, which equals to opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, would equal to the opposite side is the speed of wave times time. The hypotenuse is the speed of the source times time. And we can cancel the time and get sine theta equals to the speed of the wave divided by the speed of the source. We will work on a sample problem in the next lesson. Now let me show you a couple of pictures of shock wave cones. This picture of a supersonic T-38 Talon aircraft was taken using Schlieren photography. Schlieren photography allows the visualization of fluid density variation. You can see multiple shock wave cones caused by different parts of the aircraft. In this picture, you can see some of the shock wave cones because of the condensation of water vapor in the atmosphere. Water vapor is clear and not visible. However, we can see clouds because clouds are made of little water droplets. When there is enough water vapor in the air, shock waves can cause condensation, making the cones visible to us. To hear sonic boom and to learn a few more things about supersonic flight and the bullwhip sonic boom, please check out the videos from the links at my website.